Hi and thanks for watching this video which is about my homebrew computer. Today I wanted to do an update about uh, serial input output and in particular doing file transfer from the PC to the homebrew. Um, before I get started just to explain what's going on here so I wanted to show my homebrew. I always think it's good to show the actual mess of wires somehow uh, acting as a computer. Uh, below that uh, you can see the display um, that the homebrew, uh, I've got a capture card there to capture the homebrew computer display um, and then on the left hand side is a PowerShell window uh, so this is so I can show you the PowerShell scripts uh, and explain how the PC acts as the file system host to send files to the homebrew computer and uh, in fact that's what I want to show you now just quickly um, the protocol um, I could have used something like X modem, uh, but the size of my serial buffer is 256 bytes uh, and it's handled by interrupts. Um, and I, I feel that I can get a better um, throughput with uh, a custom protocol which more, uh, more reflects the, the kind of uh, uh, capabilities that I've implemented. Uh, so that's why I've gone for this rather than Xmodem. This is actually a lot simpler than Xmodem, even though Xmodem itself is very simple indeed. Um, so we have a, a block orientated protocol here. Um, each block is always uh, 253 bytes. There's always 250 uh, bytes of payload, not all of it necessarily is data to be acted on. And there's a one byte block number. Uh, the payload size is always present. And there's also a very simple checksum. Um, so that's the 253 bytes. Um, block numbers are important because uh, block number zero is a special block which actually provides metadata for the homebrew computer to act on. Um, basically block zero uh, gives me the file name of the uh, file to create on the homebrew computer and also a, uh, a zero terminated list of um, folder names that I need to traverse to put the file in the right folder on the homebrew computer. Um, for any fol uh, block that is not zero it is uh, assumed to be a data block and then the uh, payload size byte is needed so that uh, because not all of the 250 bytes uh, might be actual data. So it's pretty simple in terms of structure. Uh, the actual transmission uh, handshake is that the PC always starts uh, by sending a SOH uh, character. So that means I have to get the homebrew to be um, already in listening mode. Um, and, and I've actually created a basic version of this. If I can just quickly load it up, which I should have done already. should have been better prepared, but it doesn't take long. It's called PCRX, and if I just very quickly show you um, the start routine immediately um, in line 22 calls a function which is wait for SOH or ETB. Um, so that's basically waiting for the start of header. So um, it's a very short routine, as you can see, uh, includes putting the file into the right place on the homebrew's file system. Um, so the PC sends the SOH uh, and the homebrew needs to send it back to say that I'm ready to uh, receive a block and then the PC can send the block um, and then the, uh, the homebrew will uh, do a checksum on that block uh, hopefully it's all good in which case it will send a, an, an ACK if it's not it will send a NAC and a NAC means that the block will be resent by the PC um, I have a very um, reliable link now, so I don't really need to um, uh, worry about errors so much, not like uh, as Xmodem used to have uh, that needed to. Um, so I don't, I don't expect errors. I have, I have now uh, a, a very reliable um, serial chip. Uh, I previously used a two megahertz part, which really wasn't fast enough to be reliable for my five megahertz PC, uh, homebrew PC. Um, so I don't get many errors. So assuming that you um, get an ACK at step five, the the PC then will 
uh, the send a another uh, another block. In fact, it doesn't go to step one; it goes to step three uh, to uh, send a uh, the next block. Uh, however, if there's no more blocks, you've sent all the blocks, then the PC instead of sending an SRH will send an ETB. Um, in fact, it does go to step one. Yes, uh, to to say that here comes another block. Uh, only when this homebrew receives an ETB the, and it sends an app back, then um, everything is, uh, is done. Now, what that means is there's some parallelization going on here because when the PC sends a block, uh, when the homebrew sends the acknowledgements back, the PC can start sending the next block. Uh, but the, in parallel with that, the homebrew is actually, can actually write the blocks to the file system. Um, sending 250 bytes over uh, serial doesn't take very long at all, uh, but still it gives you a little bit of parallel um, processing there uh, to make it go a bit faster. But what I thought would be fun is to see how fast uh, I can transmit. Um, let's just quit out of that and we'll go to the folder where I put all my data for testing with. Just put it here because I don't know why I just decided that could put so you've got two binary files here bank zero dot bin and bank one dot bin. These are ROM images which are transferred to the PC already. Let's just delete um, these two files because we're going to resend them so that uh, we can test the speed of transfer. Okay, so let's just do another directory listing. Good, they're gone. So if I type start on here, the PC program that I've made already, the receive program on, on, on my homebrew, um, I can, on the PowerShell, there is bank zero, let's send, will go to the data image folder of the homebrew. So let's start the homebrew first, it's waiting. And then I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. And this will uh, mean that we can time it. So this is a 16K binary image. Ready, go. So the PowerShell is quite verbose. So I could check what was actually happening. Um, it shouldn't take too long. I've obviously done this test before. Um, and let's see how long. Uh, take I'm gonna wait for the homebrew to say it's done okay 21.15 seconds let's just say 21.1 seconds um, let's do a quick calculation so 16 bytes divided by 21.1 is 776 bytes per second let's just quickly confirm data is there there we are you can see first entry bank zero dot bin 16,000 now um, that's not too bad it only took 21 seconds um, but I also decided to write the same thing in my monitor route in my monitor um, so we can do the same thing uh, and now this is a machine code version of uh, the receive program so let's do that it's waiting to start. Let's go on to the PowerShell. But now let's transfer bank one rather than bank zero so we can see we've got a different bank. And let's start. And it's already going to be quite a lot quicker. I can already see it's quite a lot quicker. Um, and we'll just stop there. I don't know what that narrow means. 12.6 seconds. So now let's do. 12.6 seconds, so 16, 384, 384, divided by 12.6, 1300, divided by 776. It's more than nearly 1.7 times faster. Uh, so that's uh, a decent speed up. Now let's just do a directory listing to make sure that it really is there. I'll have to quit out of the monitor. And there's bank one. At the, the end here so that proves that we've got two files and I can basically transmit a 16k file in about 12 seconds which I think is decent enough and 
this is going to help me to be able to write assets or build assets on the PC and then quickly uh, get them over onto the homebrew without having to take the SD card out of the homebrew. So I've got the SD card here and then having to load it up into the PC, etc. Um, sorry, this video is a little bit longer than I thought, but I hope that was interesting. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.